In this video, we're talking about what's called heat of reaction and how it's related to stoichiometry. So, when a chemical reaction occurs, there's a barrier to the reaction, an energy barrier called the activation energy barrier. And what has to happen for, say, two molecules to come together to react is that for the two molecules to come together, if you think about it, a molecule on the outside is basically a cloud of electrons, and electrons all have negative charges. So for those two molecules to come close enough to each other to, to get together, to react, they have to overcome the repulsion that the negative charges have for each other. So they need a certain amount of energy. They also have to you know, break some bonds and do some other things. The amount of energy that it takes to do that is called the activation energy barrier. And if we look at a graph of um, a chemical reaction, on the x-axis here in the bottom, we have the reactants here. This is over time. As time passes, it goes this way, right? The reactants are here, and then as the reaction happens, we end up with the products. The y-axis here gives us the energy. In the left-hand side graph here, the red one, we start out at some energy here. We have to add some energy to overcome the barrier but the products end up at a lower energy than the reactants. When that's the case, we say that's an exothermic reaction, and the change in energy, or we call that delta H, or the heat of reaction, this delta H is called the heat of reaction, is negative, it's less than zero. In other words, when, when delta H, or the heat of reaction, is negative, that means that energy is released. So when you burn a candle, that's an exothermic process. The heat of reaction of the delta H is negative. And you can feel that because when you put your hand close to the flame, you can feel the heat. That's because the products are at a lower energy than the reactants. Um, a hand warmer. When you, you know, activate a hand warmer, um, there's several different chemical reactions that happen. One is the dissolution of, or the yeah, dissolution, dissolving calcium chloride. And it ends up, when you do that, the products are lower energy than the reactants, and the energy that's given off if, makes it feel warm to you. On the other hand, this is another um, graph, and this is talking about what's called an endothermic reaction. Here, again, we start with the reactants on the left, products on the right, and we have an activation barrier. We have to put some energy in in order for the molecules to, to react. But here, the energy of the products is higher than the energy of the reactants. And this means that the overall change in energy, the heat of reaction, is positive, greater than zero. And when this happens, what it feels like is it feels like to you that it's getting colder. So um, when you dissolve, um, you know, a, a, a hand core, I guess, an ammonium nitrate is one thing. When you dissolve that in water, it, the, you can feel it, it gets colder because it's pulling in energy from the water, from whatever it's in, from your hand if your hand's there. And so this is an end, in an endothermic reaction, the heat of reaction or the change in energy for that reaction is positive um, because the energies of the products are higher than the energies of the reactants. Now let's see how this relates to stoichiometry. So this is an example of an exothermic reaction. This is the combustion of methane. Methane is CH4. And combustion means we're adding oxygen to this hydrocarbon, making carbon dioxide and water. And one way of writing the energy change is to write it as a product because it's given off, it's released. So we put plus 891 kilojoules on the right-hand side. It's a product, it's something that's produced. Or we can write delta H is equal to negative. It's less than zero because it's given off. 891 kilojoules per mole would be the heat of reaction and this is an exothermic process. Delta H, the heat of reaction is negative. Energy is released in the process. Now, stoichiometry, we have conversion factors, just like we have with mole to mole ratios. You know, we, you know, at this point, you know that we could say that one mole of methane is equal to two moles of oxygen and so on. Well now, okay, energy is just a, another, in this case, it's a product. If it's an endothermic reaction, you'll see that it's a reactant, but here it's a product we can say that one mole of methane is equal to negative 891 kilojoules. In other words, for every one mole of methane that burns, combusts, we release 891 kilojoules of energy. Also, we can say that two moles of oxygen is equal to negative 891 kilojoules of energy. 
It's just it's a conversion factor just like we have with the multiple ratios. In an endothermic process, this is the dissolution, the dissolving of ammonium chloride in water. So if we just add some water to solid ammonium chloride, um, it's an endothermic process. We have to add some energy. It ends up that it pulls that energy from the, the surroundings, the air, the glass, the water around it. And so it feels cold to you if you're touching the beaker that it's happening in. But the energy change, the heat of reaction is positive. We write it as a reactant if we write it this way. So an endothermic process, the heat of reaction is positive, the change in energy is positive. And we could say, for example, we have a conversion factor, one mole of ammonium chloride that is solid is equal to positive 14.7 kilojoules. In other words, it takes 14.7 kilojoules of energy to be put in in order to dissolve one mole of ammonium chloride. So let's do a, an example problem. We want to find the change in energy when 7.34 grams of mercury 2 oxide decomposes. And I give you the balanced equation. Um, two mercury 2 oxides decompose into two liquid mercuries and oxygen gas. And I give you delta H. It's positive 182. So ask yourself, is this exothermic or endothermic? Right, it's endothermic because delta H is positive. In other words, we have to put energy in for this to happen. We might put a, a triangle over this arrow if we wanted to. We don't have to. And so this is dimensional analysis. Um, so we're going to look at what units we want to end up with. So we want to know the change in energy. In other words, we want to know how many kilogram, uh, kilograms, kilojoules, okay, uh, what the, um, and we have to put in or take out. Because it's positive, we're going to get a positive number here. Because it's an endothermic process, we'll know that. So, the conversion factors, two moles of mercury two oxide is equal to positive 182 kilojoules. We have to put that much energy in to dissociate two moles of mercury two oxide. And we also know the molar mass, we're going to need that. One mole of mercury two oxide is equal to 216.589 grams of mercury two oxide. So I got this number here, the 216.589, just by looking on the periodic table, looking up the molar mass of mercury, 200.59 grams per mole, and adding it to that of oxygen, 15.999 grams per mole. And I get this. So now, okay, make sure everything cancels. Our starting point is 7.34 grams of mercury 2 oxide. Grams of mercury 2 oxide cancels. We get moles of mercury 2 oxide, which cancels here. And we end up with positive... 308 kilojoules.